Welcome back everybody. If you have multiple camera angles from your iPhone, from your FaceTime camera, from your DSLR, and you want to synchronize all the audio, even if they're at different frequencies, you're going to love this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use multi-cam angles and picture in picture, all within just a few clicks and how to automate the entire workflow process. You do not want to miss this tutorial, so stay tuned. What I did was I, I recorded this tutorial with multiple cameras with multiple audio. And we're going to start with that. So here it is up here. And I'm going to click on the um, event. I'm going to do new project. And I'm just going to call it pretty much the same thing. R tutorial any is element which. Something like that. All right, blank slate here. Now let's grab my stuff here. I'm going to do a... Uh, Command F, Finder, I know where my stuff is, and I will just drag it right over. All right, so anyways, so this is my actual screen. Let's drag this one over, and we're gonna put it over here, and not on the timeline directly. This, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it so that I don't see. I, I like to just see the clip. I don't, I don't mess with the other stuff. Okay, so we have this one clip. Now let's grab some more clips, pictures. This is from a different camera, see the camera names. Sometimes I have trouble dragging things when I grab it by the play button. Finder again, and go to Downloads, and this is where I have a third clip. And this is a 2.23 gigabyte. I'm on a MacBook Pro, by the way. I'm going to drop this in here. So I have three clips, but we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to do some pretty cool techniques that I just figured out today, and I want to share it with you. First of all, the audio is not synced. If I click on this particular uh, MVI file, you'll see over here it's 48 kilohertz, but then if I click on here, it is 44.1 kilohertz. Now that's, at first, I thought that would be no problem whatsoever. Uh, let's just click on this one and check this one out. So it's 44.1. So they're both 44.1, and this one's 48. It actually ran into problems because it, it sort of drifted the sync. It synced and then it drifted when I did it manually. So let's do it, let's do it automatically. So let's do a couple things here. First, I want to do like a picture in picture, but I also want to be able to switch back to uh, full screen pretty easily. So the traditional way was complicated, but I'm going to show you like a way better way to do it, I believe. Uh, but first, let's get some audio synced up. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some multi compound clips and we're going to create some multi cam clips. But to do that, I want to sync. I want a picture in picture of this and this in one, right? So let's go ahead and first sync them. I'm going to command enter on both of them so they're both highlighted. Right click and do new. And I'm just going to do synchronize clips. Okay, it's going to create a synchronized clip for us. Make sure, now yours is probably defaulted to uh, both check marks. You want to uncheck one of these, disable audio components on AV clips. And we'll hit OK. It should take not too long. It created this new clip for us. And so now if I go into this clip, you'll see I have two clips that should be, should be synchronized. And what I want to do is, I know the audio I want is from here and not from here. So know which audio track you want to keep. And you can't detach the audio for some reason, but you can lower the audio to nothing. So I don't understand why you can't do that. So now they're synced. See, it's got a little bit of a gap over here to fix the sync issue. So that's what syncs them up right there. So what I could do is I can do a control C on both of these or a command C, go back to a blank slate, and I can actually paste them in here, and they're synced up. But you can't tell, because one's on top of the other. All right, so now I can actually detach the audio. So I'm not sure why you can't do it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna detach the audio. I'm going to delete that audio. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all three of these clips by doing Alt G, and I'm going to say synced. Or sorry, let's see, synced. Cool. Now that they're synced, I can delete this if I want. So delete. Right now, I have the I have the actual synced clips right here. But as you can see, it's not very helpful. So let's let's edit this. So I only want to sync it for a certain reason. I want to sync it just simply so I can double click on it. And I can 
move this one down and have me on top. You'll see where I'm going here in a second. Let's see if the audio make, matches my lips. Today I'm going to show you how Looks to good. find elements within a vector. But let's try it way down here so see if there's any drift. Say, okay, 275.8. Nope, looks good. So that looks good, right? So what I want to do now, <laughs> now this sounds complicated. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to uh, well actually I'm going to transform it. So we're going to transform. I'm going to make this one smaller. Now this seems like a lot of work, but it's gonna save you a ton of work in the end. And I kinda of just wanna put myself in this corner, put baby in the corner. Now I'm gonna crop it. I know this sounds like a lot of work, but wait till you see how much work I'm gonna save in just a moment. So then we'll we'll go ahead and, I just wanna make it look like I'm in that box basically. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll change the view to something high, like uh, probably just 100% is probably fine. Move this little thing over to the edges so you can see them. And I can really fine tune where I want to put this, which is basically right there. Let's go back to view and fit this in. And I don't see the done button. <laughs> okay, but that's where I want it. And there's the done button. Okay, so that's where I want it throughout the whole clip. So it's synchronized. Is in a set of. And that's one clip I can use. I have to get the number. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a a uh, compound clip by command enter on both of these alt g again and say uh, pick in pick synced seems like a lot of waste but but now i can i can go ahead and delete this out of my timeline i have pick and pick synced here so i want this clip i want the full view to be able to pick from i want this one to pick from and i want this one to pick from so that's quite a bit but and now all of these need to be synced up but to do that really quick let's just highlight I don't need the synced one, but I'm going to highlight by doing command on each one of these. And we're going to right click and we're going to do new multi cam clip. Now here, I'm going to call this my master multi cam clip. And this is all with some 4K video, some 1080p, uh, my iPhone, uh, it's, it's, and it's OBS. And OBS is running in the background right now to record this particular session. So. Use audio for synchronization is checked. That's key. Hit OK, and you are set. But now I'm going to show you how to edit this multicam real quick to be simple and easy and effective. Master multicam multi clip. Now I don't need any of these clips anymore. I just have this one that I want, and that's it. I don't even need to look at these. I can delete them right now if I want to, right? So what we're going to do, first I'm going to drop this down here. And you're going to say, well, look, I don't need that little blank spot in the middle either. I don't need that. Delete. Okay, so what we're going to do now, you can see it's just this one particular view, but you see down here it's got these little boxes. It's probably hard to see with that thing there, but see those little boxes right there? We have that. So don't worry about that yet. What I want to do is I want to change the view here so we can see the multicam at the same time. So let's go to Window, or I'm sorry, View. Go down to Show in Viewer and type and put in Angles or Command, or what is it? Shift Command 7. Boom, and you have these angles here. I'm gonna make this much bigger for you, and you can see, and this is just fantastic. Let's just put it that way. So, I didn't click the blade tool, but as you can see, I'm on the blade tool here. So I'm gonna start with that. Now this is my viewer, this is my angle choice. Before you begin, see up here, this is crucial. This is audio, so when I switch, it's gonna switch the audio and the video. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna switch, so it's audio and video, I'm sorry. This is just video and this is just audio. So I wanna click on just video because I wanna keep my audio, which is the main audio, and to check that, so I switched it, just notice that, but to check that, I can go down here and double click on it and it actually opens up. Now I have to, let me make this a little bit bigger now. It's got all of my angles, all synced, all synced, which is fantastic. Um, but as you can see, okay, this is crucial too. See this little audio and monitor here? The audio one's important, the modern monitor one is not so important because I'm gonna be switching those. But I know that the audio that I wanna keep throughout the whole thing is this particular one. So I just, I know that because I know which microphone I use for that and that's the one I choose. So the rest, I don't have to worry about even um, doing anything with. So let's go back and you can see um, as I play this. Vector. 
called V, and we're going to assign... All a, of these are plan, let's do it. and... Let's do, or letters, let's do letters. And C, a, they're all synced up. B, Isn't that great? Now, now the next thing I want to show you is the fact that I can cut and splice these and choose which angle on the fly really quick. All right, so let's go ahead and start over here. I've got the... I'm on the A, so the selection, I have the select tool selected. Up here, it's automatically on the blade, remember that. So where do I wanna start? I wanna start on this particular one right here. So I'm gonna click on this, and that's where, I see down here, the timeline, change to that. I'm gonna just go down here, and I'm gonna hit spacebar and let it play, and then watch. As it's playing, actually, I know I'm gonna cut out a lot of this, so let's skip a few. So it's asking the question, is Z in? Uh, the, let's skip to about the letter A is within the zoom in a little bit. Letters. We're gonna find, find out if See my little uh, snap fingers right here. Z Watch. Z. No. Okay. I'm gonna show you a quick tutorial on There we go. So let's go ahead and clip this off, hit the letter A, do this, hit the backspace or the delete button, and now we start here. Okay, now I'm gonna <laughs> I can keep the B tool if I want here, doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and hit play now, and it's going to play with this starting off. Now watch what I do, and watch. Tutorial on how to find out if there is a element inside of a vector. So let's get let's get started by creating a fake vector called V. Then we're going to set that equal to a concatenation or a column of letters. So Z, A, B. We'll do A again just to show the repeats, and we'll do E. Okay, so we set our our vector V up, uh, command X. Okay, so you get the point, but every time I did this, it put a little break here, and that's fine. You would break the clip, and it switches the angle, switches whatever. Let's say you made a mistake. You can just control Z or whatever, or you can, you can right-click on each clip, and you can go back to... Um, active audio or change the active video back to the video that you previously had or any of the videos. So as you go through it, it just changes it for you. It is super, super convenient, super awesome. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close this tutorial out. This is just supposed to be quick. I'll edit this one later. But this particular video here, what I'm gonna do on this clip, I'm gonna actually zoom in on the actual code so I can switch to a big angle of the code. Well, I hope this tutorial is super helpful for you because I know it is for me and I will see you on the next one.